Hello, it is Sunday, August 15th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I hope you're having a nice Sunday so far. We probably have a long solve ahead of us because it is a Sunday puzzle, the longest, well, the largest grid of the week's puzzles. I suppose not necessarily the longest solve, but very often the longest solve because there are so many clues to solve. But before we solve those clues, there are two um, corrections, well, not corrections, I suppose, but um, bits of added context from yesterday's puzzle that I wanted to make sure I read. One of them is from Michelle McBride Charpentier, who commented on the video yesterday. And you may remember that Inuit was an answer and referred to the uh, language of Greenland. And he says, I refused to accept Inuit as an answer until it become, became unavoidable because I knew a bit too much about it. Inuit literally means the people. The pet peeve of many an Inuit is when someone says the redundant, the Inuit people, and in no way refers to language. Inuit languages exists as a term for a grouping of languages, but the clue reading the Greenlandic language is a form of Inuit is plain wrong. It cannot be used interchangeably, like how we say English meaning language, English meaning people, or French meaning language, and French meaning people, etc., because there are actual language names such as Kalalisut in Greenland's case. Also, respected dictionaries may still have definitions saying it refers to language, but they are wrong. Unless they want to argue they took Inuit as a loan word into English and modified its meaning. Um, I suspect that latter uh, supposition is probably what would have been argued in this case, but I take Michelle's point. Thank you very much. That is very informative. And uh, the other, well, one of the things I remember not personally being familiar with was the actor Mako, who was referred to in one of the clues and answer pairs. And Ronald Bryan writes in a comment, I can see how if you didn't know the actor Mako, this could be difficult to get to. Having grown up with uh, <laughs> the Conan movies on HBO and Sidekicks, um, they were on all the time. So that clue is an immediate aha. He is well known for portraying the antagonist in Samurai Jack and lots of other work, but the thing I'll remember about him is sitting in a hall at San Diego Comic-Con where they are announcing the CGI TMNT movie and the people on screen mentioned that there was only one person they could think of to play Master Splinter and they got him, and then pronouncing his name close to Mako, which threw me for a loop for a moment trying to figure out what they were talking about. So, good bit of context and a fun story there from... Uh, Ronald Bryan. And yes, I was not familiar with Mako, but I looked him up and an interesting figure with an interesting career for certain. So shall we move on to today's Sunday crossword, which might take us some time. So on these longer puzzles, why belabor the introduction any more than I need to? This is a puzzle by Amy Lucido and Ella Dershowitz, and it has a title. Most crosswords, as we've seen, do not have titles. They are simply labeled the crossword. But this one is called Think Twice, and I assume that means we will have a theme. Um, haven't had a theme the last couple days, I don't think, so it'll be nice to be, to be engaging with some kind of gimmick or trick or something. Um, and I don't have anything else to say about that, <laughs> so let's get going. No need to think twice about this. Ready to get started? Okay. Confound. So to confound is to frustrate. Um, not sure, This probably could be more than one thing, so we'll probably move on. I've just noticed my uh, heat-activated color-changing Transport for London mug is already, it's already going dark. We're already transitioning to the, the night service trains, so no chance of this staying light by the end of this long puzzle. Anyway, sarcastic internet laughter. sarcastic internet laughter. So it's not R-O-F-L, which is, I think, generally used sincerely. Is it he-he? That doesn't seem sarcastic necessarily. What am I not seeing about this? Uh, most Times Square signage. Well, you'd think it would be neon, wouldn't you? Times Square, New York. But maybe it's getting at something else. I mean, maybe it's not Maybe it is no longer neon. It probably isn't any. It probably isn't neon anymore. 
could be LED lighting. That's actually probably more accurate. Half of the 55 union merger. So unions, unions merged in 1955, and this is one of them. Well, the AFL-CIO is a big, is a major union in the U.S., and that presumably is the merger of the unions, AFL and CIO. So we could be looking at an A or a C here. Let's keep going for now. Performance check. Performance check. Oh boy, so far, no total gimmies in the first row. Dark hair and a warm smile for two. Well, it'll be plural, which isn't much. <laughs> but it's maybe something. Let's look down here. Ink holders in pens and squid. Um, could this be sacks? In other words, an ink sack? Ukraine or Lithuania formerly. Uh, so formerly Soviet Socialist Republics or SSRs. Jazzy, James, and Jones. So here's an and, so it's another plural. So this would be Etta James and Etta Jones. Keep going across here. Samoan capital. Oh boy. Oh, I should know this. And I think I have put this in a crossword before. Um, probably more, more obvious with crosses. Let's keep going. Two's opposite. Could be two and fro. Full length. I don't know, uncut maybe, like a film, full-length film. Let's look at some crosses and see. Just like blank, just like that, perhaps. Could be. Things that may be rubbed after din-din. <laughs> so I think this is a sort of cutesy, childlike reference to dinner, and therefore the answer will also be a sort of cutesy and childlike answer. So it could be tummies. You rub your tummy after din-din. Playwright Will, who is a 2005 Pulitzer finalist, not sure offhand, crew implement. Oh, I want to say this is a skull. This is uh, something to do with with crew, the the rowing sport, uh, and I and I think that's what this is. And I'm trying to remember what it is. Is it the is it the thing that holds the or can't remember, but I think that's the I think that that's this vocabulary is related. One getting special instruction. Well, a special instructor might be a tutor, someone who specially instructs one person. So the person getting special instruction would be the 2T. And a corn kernel, e.g. I think this is a niblet. I think that's the kind of thing that you'd call a corn kernel. Um, blabberer. Well, with all these crosses, this certainly looks like loudmouth. Uh-oh. So now we've got crosses here. Let's see. What's this again? Performance check. Oh. Um, well, test performance. Uh, presumably, we're going to check your performance with a test, I would think. So that fills playwright Will Will Eno. I'm not familiar with Will Eno, um, but apparently a 2005 Pulitzer finalist. Half of a 55 union mer merger. Okay, so it is the AFL-CIO, and in this case, it is the AFL. Most times square signage. I'm not sure. That's enough arguing out of you. Could be drop it. Oh, most times square signage is ads. Okay. I was looking for an adjective or something that could be used to describe the thing, but it's actually, the it's, it's a noun. It's the category of signage that these are, ads. And then lip punkering is sour. You pucker your lips because of sour lemon juice, say. That's enough arguing out of you. It does look like drop it, doesn't it? And blank dress looks like prom dress. Um, a uh, high school dance is a prom and, and uh, women would wear dresses to it. Response to how bad was it? Don't ask. How are the first few answers of this crossword for me? First few clues, don't ask. Okay, Aquafina is to PepsiCo as blank as is to Coca-Cola. So this is an analogy. I don't know that we've seen too many of these on the series so far, but this is this is this. Um, you, you've probably seen 
this formatting before, but what this means is that the relationship, oops, sorry, the relationship of Aquafina to PepsiCo is equivalent to the relationship of whatever the answer to this clue is to Coca-Cola. So in this case, it looks like Aquafina is a bottled water brand owned by PepsiCo. And so we're looking for a bottled water brand, bottled water brand owned by Coca-Cola. I'm not sure which is owned by Coca-Cola, but based on the length and the crosses, I'm guessing it's Dasani water. Cause for an onslaught of yearly texts. And here we have uh, this sort of abbreviated form of texts, TXTs, referring to text messages on a phone, I would think. So this will also be some kind of abbreviated or contracted form of the answer. What is that? Year, what would happen yearly that would be an on, that would cause an onslaught of texts? I'm not immediately seeing it, so let's move on. Added to the staff. Oh wait, I see, it's B-Day, birthday. Every year it happens and you might be texted, congratulations from your friends, your BFFs for another sort of, uh, I don't know, internet-y slang thing. Practice whose name liter means literally union. Um, I'm not sure offhand, but we've skipped ahead a bit. Let's see. Let's go back to what is the what is the last across we saw? Oh, actually, we're quite a ways back here. Something that bugs criminals. So this seems like, I mean, it probably doesn't mean something that annoys criminals. We're probably being a, we're, we're being a bit clever, right? Hence the. Um, well, actually, I. I don't actually know. So <laughs> either this means something that annoys criminals or something that sort of taps their phones, right? Puts a bug on them. And I actually don't know which of those is meant to be the more obvious one and therefore which is meant to conversely be the pun as delineated by the question mark. I'm actually not sure. Duplicitous. Uh, Two-faced. Still haven't seen much of the theme, but the reason I mentioned that is because the puzzle is called Think Twice, and here we have an answer that includes two. And it does intersect, I didn't point out, I suppose, an element of the geometry of this puzzle, which is that we've got these three cell shaded regions here. In this case, Margaret, a novelist Margaret, and that looks like Margaret Atwood, doesn't it? But that doesn't fit here. Could this be something where this could be one or two to make this an O? Oh, I see. This is a two. What does that mean? So there's a two in this shaded region. The theme is think twice. This would be two-faced, but it doesn't fit if we put two in here. And this surely is correct because Margaret Atwood is a novelist and we're getting two in a theme region in a puzzle called Think Twice. So that must be correct. Does the F work here? Gladly, old style. Dark hair and a warm smile for two. Oh, traits, I suppose. I was thinking, trying to get something more specific than that, but traits, I guess, is what that is. Um, something that bugs criminals. Signed off on. It could be okayed, okay, D. I would have assumed there to be something like informally in this clue just to, to indicate that. Mer Actress Merrill, not sure. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Maybe we keep going for now and we come back to it eventually. Places for development. Sorry, I'm still getting distracted by this stuff over here. Sorry if you're seeing something I'm not. Genre for BTS or Blackpink? Well, I've literally never even heard of Blackpink, but I think I've seen enough references to B BTS on Twitter to know this is K-pop, Korean pop music. What does BTS stand for, I wonder? Who knows? Don't need to know to answer this clue. Like morning people vis-a-vis -vis night owls around dawn. Perkier, I suppose. So one thing to to note about the way this is clued is that um, when this says like morning people vis-a-vis -vis night owls around dawn, it's not just saying this is something morning people are 
and night owls aren't. It's, it's setting up a relational sort of comparison. It's saying this is what morning people are compared to night owls. Morning people are perkier than night owls. They're not just perky. This isn't just the trait that distinguishes them. It's the comparator between them. Uh, that, that's what this is getting at when you see this morning people vis-a-vis night owls. It's, it's setting up a relationship between the two of them, not just getting a trait of morning people. So that's why this is perkier. And I'm just mentioning that because I can imagine that someone could see this clue, think, oh, it must be perky, but it doesn't fit, and then, and then not, get the, and not, not get the answer. And I wanted to um, call that out because that comes up from time to time on the crosswords. Okay. Um, stroke. Could be pet, as in stroke a cat, something I've been doing a lot of in my cat-sitting mission over the last couple of weeks. East in German would be Ost, right? Um, first law enforcement organization in the United States to hire a female officer, 1910. Interesting. Uh, I assume that it's something PD, right? NYPD, LAPD, New York, that, for New York or Los Angeles. Oh, and then this, uh, something that bugs criminals looks like a wiretapper, doesn't it? So, a wiretapping, I guess. A wiretapping? Um, so I, so that was my, this was my original assumption was that this was, was that the, the punny version of this would be getting at the phone tap, wiretap in this case, but I wasn't really sure. So we needed some crosses in order to confirm or deny. Gladly old style. What is this? I'm worried about this F, but that does seem true. I mean, could it be one faced and then there's something going on with the theme? Absorb the beauty of as a scene. Uh, drink up. Boy, it really does look like it's going to be one-faced, doesn't it? Let's see. Lacked the gumption to. Yeah, it is one-faced. Because if you lacked the gumption to do something, I lacked the gumption to put in one-faced here earlier. I didn't dare to do it. This is uh, dared not. I dared not enter one until it was fully confirmed by crosses. And then here we have confound, we have addle. In other words, to addle one's brain, to confound one's brain. And then gladly old style is leaf. Is that what that is? Do I have something wrong? I suppose, I'm actually, I'm not familiar with this, I suppose, old timey slang. I'm, I'm not, I don't know this one. Actress Merrill. it looks like done, maybe, but I don't, I don't know. So would this be two again? Could we put that in? Would that be correct? If the pessim oh, so it's it's Merrill Duna, right? Because here we have down. If the pessimists are right, at worst, at worst, we won't be able to solve this puzzle. Alerts. Um, I'm wondering if there's going to be. Sorry, I'm just, I'm getting distracted again. I'm just wondering if there's going to be another case where we'd think there would be a two, but there's a one. Is there some reason this actually is one duplicitous? I mean, duplicitous is definitely two-faced. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, let's see. What is this? Words before, before. Okay. Well, that would be on or before. So, so that isn't one. This is going to drive me absolutely crazy until I'm completely certain of what it means. I just don't, I just am not seeing it. Um, anyway, okay, so here we have, uh, what is this? We've got sort of two strings of symbols that are often used to denote profanity. And this looks like, so, okay, so this looks like two letter words. I see, I see, I get it now. Okay, I'm sorry if you got, got here faster than I did. <clears throat> the theme of the puzzle is think twice. And what we're doing here is when we've got a number that crosses one of these shaded two regions, we're doubling. We're saying there are two of these one. So this one is doubled and becomes two to create the proper answer, two-faced. Similarly here, we've got this two in this shaded region, and that doubles the two that crosses it 
to create the correct answer, which is four letter words. That's what's going on here. So each one of these regions, and I'm gonna put these in because a few weeks ago there was a theme with shaded cells and I didn't write in all of the theme answers once we'd already determined what they were and someone in the comments was annoyed at me because they said I could have, um, could have gotten some letters filled more quickly. Anyway, so each one of these will have a number that crosses it and that number will be doubled in order to successfully create the proper answer. And that does, that does limit, that does constrain some of these answers because there presumably aren't too many numbers that can cross with T, W, or zero. Um, yeah, so that, that's interesting. In fact, I already, sorry, I, I wasn't intending to go solve these, but I just happened to see this clue pushing up daisies. And so I think what this is going to be is three feet under. And if we double three, we would get six, six feet under. Typical burial depth and common phrase. So um, yeah, well, let's just look at this one and see if we can see anything. Uh, what the beleaguered are behind, could this be sort of one step or two steps or something? I'm not seeing it immediately. Let's just let's just go back to solving the puzzle. Let's see. Practice whose name means literally union. Oh, could it be yoga, the practice of yoga? Booze and cheers. Not sure, actually. Light. Maybe yoga is incorrect. Bought in. Oh, well, bought, bought, bought in could be anteed, as in to a, a poker game or something. You ante in. Stop along the highway. That could be an in. Oh, light is ignite. Sorry. It's a verb. I was... Once again, as always, don't get hung up on a particular meaning of a word. You have to think of the other senses or parts of speech this could be. It wasn't light as in a flame or, or a torch. It was light as in ignite a flame or a torch. Booze and cheers. I suppose they're noises. That's a little generic, but yeah, I mean, they are, I guess, noises. Really, though, is it? Is it the case that booze and cheers will be described as noises? even though they come from a person and we usually don't refer to that as noises. I guess, I don't know, fair enough. Okay, beach with a girl who swings so cool. I think this is probably Ipanema as immortalized in the song, The Girl from Ipanema, who swings so cool. I can't quite place that lyric in that song, but it sounds like it would be in that song. Coaxed out of, teased out of, we had to sort of tease out what the meaning of this theme was in this puzzle. We had to coax it out of this grid. High quality cannabis in slang. I'm not sure, is it ends? In other words, the sort of tips? Spirit in Arabian myth. Um, that would be a jinn, right? Is it a genie? Could it be spelled J-I-N-N? -N? I think it's spelled a number of ways in the, in the sort of romanization of this word. Uh, maybe, the, yeah, I suppose this is ends. Job to do. Could it be a, oh, a stint, I suppose? Do a stint as something. I can't even. Just. Just, oh, I see. So this, this is a, a sort of very modern. Th these are both very m modern bits of colloquial speech. I can't even, very, very much a, a phrase of the moment, and then wow, just wow, sort of the equivalent of that, and also a very modern bit of language. A seller's need. Boy, this is a strange collection of consonants, isn't it? Uh, when, repeat it when repeated a reproof, tisk tisk. Wow, this is this is getting. What could possibly, oh, tut tut probably, <laughs> sorry. Tut tut may, is better because that gives us a vowel here and that, that makes this less ludicrous. Um, so a seller's need, 
why am I not seeing this? Environmental opening. Oh, eco, presumably. In other words, a, an opening, a prefix to a word uh, that indicates environmental concerns, eco for ecological. So this would be customer. So then what is this? High quality cannabis in slang. Oh, endo. Oh, endosperm, maybe that's getting at. So customer is what a seller needs. Whoops. The avant-garde artists, Congo and Pierre Brissau. And artists is in quotations. What is that getting at? Overturned, repealed, possibly. Figure out, oh, could this be apes? Would that be why artist was in quotation marks? Bad temper and figure out and the raven, oh no, no. Sorry, let's delete all of this. Oh, oh no, maybe this is correct. Sorry, the ra I saw the Raven and then I thought Poe, but then it says it's the Raven writer's initials, which are Edgar Allan Poe, E-A-P. So this probably can be repealed, actually. I'm going to repeal my repealing of this correct answer, repealed. So figure out, could be realize. And a bad temper... So this, boy, I suppose this is apes, isn't it? That's interesting. I'll have to look that up after this. Congo and Pierre Bressel, they must be the name of apes who created some kind of art or something. A question of perplexion could be why. I was asking myself, why is this one-faced? Again and again earlier. <clears throat> Fight sight. I mean, I suppose a question of perplexion could be why or who, right? Yeah. Fight sight. Confused responses. Could be huhs. Sternutation. Hmm. What is sternutation? I'm not sure. As you like it, Forrest. Arden, maybe? What the beleaguered are behind. Could this be four? No, because we need a number. We need. We do need a number to be crossing this. I'm not very confident about this whole area now. Maybe this is who. Oh, maybe it's actually not any of these things. Maybe a question of, because I'm looking at this fight sites and it seems like it should be a fight site, sorry, singular. It looks like it should be arena. So maybe this question of perplexion is what? As in what's going on? What? That's more informal than I would, than I would generally associate with a straightforward clue like that. But that would allow this to be four. And I do think we want, we do need a number to cross gear and I don't see it anywhere else. So that would make this eight, what the beleaguered are behind. This must be an expression that I'm not seeing. I don't think I'm familiar with this. Eight what? Be up for some biking. Uh, this looks like wheelie, as in when you sort of rear back on your bicycle. So maybe it's pop a wheelie to be up for some biking. You're, you're physically up when you're popping a wheelie. A man's character is his blank, Heraclitus. Looks like fate, doesn't it? In the past, could be your, as in days of your. Post on Insta, no, it's not. It's not, that, that actually doesn't fit either because in the past, it doesn't match your. I, I think I said a trick maybe a couple of weeks ago and it's quite useful. This doesn't apply to every single clue, but it, it generally does. And you can usually you can usually intuit when it's not going to quite work. With this sort of definitional clue, usually the answer will be a synonym, and so you could directly replace the um, the clue with the answer, and it will make perfect sense. So, for instance, if you were to say, 
Well, in the past, I didn't understand how this theme works. You could then replace it with the correct answer, which is, well, once, I didn't understand how this theme works. Whereas your, which was my first incorrect guess, it's sort of the right general sense and meaning of these of this phrase, but it isn't actually a synonym of in the past because you wouldn't say, well, your, I didn't understand how the theme works. You want, you need, you want to be able to directly match the part of speech that is being used in the clue. And that, that can be a huge help to d um, confirm or deny, sometimes to deny one of your guesses. Anyway, a post on Insta, that must be Instagram, so it's a pic. A ninny would be a twit, I believe. The Supreme's record label. Well, I guess it's, oh, well, sorry, it is Motown. I was gonna say, I guess it's not Motown because it doesn't fit, but of course it fits. I don't know what I was thinking. And then here, abolitionist Lucretia, Lucretia Mott, that does sound familiar. Up on, um, if you're up on something, we're, we're up on this crossword theme. We're hip to this crossword theme at this point. Press blank. Um, could be press hit. I think a press hit is what you'd call sort of a mention in a newspaper or something like that, a press hit. But I mean, I'm not completely confident of that, but I'm not sure what else it would be. Kind of chip. Well, it could be a nacho chip. Um, classic novel with the line, you must be the best judge of your own happiness. That must be Emma, right? Non-writing credentials for Conan Doyle and Chekhov informally. Yeah. Interesting. So what were Conan Doyle and Chekhov other than novelists? I'm not sure what that is. Artificial habitat. Oh, here we've got an... Oh, we already answered. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I said, oh, we've got another theme, another theme block here, but we've already... Already gotten the number, so that won't be that won't be of any help. I think we've we jumped ahead a great deal. Maybe let's come back. Deck the halls contraction. So this is deck the halls, the um, Christmas song, and over the hills we go is or oh, for over contraction to form of over is used in that song. But maybe that's not right. Latin list ender. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Uh, maybe is it tis, tis the season to be jolly? Does that come up in that song? It, the contraction of it is. And then the last, the reason I didn't think it was or is because this Latin list ender, it's probably et all. In other words, and all of the rest. Uh, some tax breaks. Non-writing credentials. So... Some tax breaks is plural, so this may well end with an S, and that would fit this clue, this non-writing credentials, which probably is going to end with an S as well. And I don't know, is it an MA, Master of Arts or something? That doesn't seem like that would have been applicable in the time of Conan Doyle, to be honest. Um, were they doctors, MDs? Not sure. Let's let's go back. Here we go. Symbol on the Connecticut state quarter. I don't know, but based on three letters and ending with a K, we might think elk, the animal, or I mean, maybe it's elk. Some Hershey candies. Oh, oh, it's probably oak, the tree. And I think some Hershey candies. I think this is Rolos. There's a sort of chocolate caramel thing, maybe. I don't remember exactly what a Rolo is, but it's some sort of Hershey chocolate treat. Wednesday, but not Friday. Wednesday, but not Friday. I'm actually not seeing that, even though I'm sure it's a very straightforward. Uh, added to the staff. And this has a question mark. So does it mean added to a physical staff as opposed to a staff meaning the workers at an organization? Blank of lies. 
bed of lies? Lead into call. Some tax breaks. I'm not doing that well in the sort of middle zone, am I? Extends in a way. Could be renews as in a subscription. Musicianship. Oh, well, your musicianship could be, you could, you could refer to your sense of musicianship as your ear. Good ear, one might say. Uh, let's see. Starman, question mark. Starman. Uh, I mean, it could be an astronaut. Let's see. If we have the, so the first law enforcement organization in the U.S. to hire a female officer, it could be, I mean, NYPD and LAPD, those are the sort of most famous PDs, I guess. Could be SFPD, San Francisco. Uh, do any of those fit here? Sarcastic internet laughter. Oh ho, I don't know. Nail polish brand, I don't know that either. List of performers. Oh, places for development. This could be uteri, uterus, as in plural of uterus. Oh, Starman. Could it be, um, or wait, I was just going to say Carl Sagan, but then that doesn't fit here either. If this was N, would that work? Uh, I'm thinking twice about all these answers. I'm second guessing myself. Oh boy, added to the staff. Oh, added to the staff. I see what this is. I missed the meaning of staff. Um, this is, means a musical staff. The uh, lines on which music is notated, added to the staff. You notated some additional music, you added it to the staff. Lead in to call. A robocall. In other words, a computerized um, telemarketing call. This does look like uteri, doesn't it? Blank of lies, a web of lies, web of lies. Yeah, that's better than bed of lies. I think I was probably thinking of web of lies, but something went wrong there up in the brain and came out bed. It threw me off the scent, so web of lies. Some tax breaks, oh, of course, write-offs. Yes, you can deduct something from your taxes and refer to that as a write-off. Finished brushing one's teeth, say. Neat, What is that? what is this getting at? Oh, spat. You spat out the, the toothpaste, of course. The Magic School Bus was its first fully animated series. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have known this fact in particular, but simply based on the number of letters and this cross with a P, I'm guessing it is the public broadcasting system, a public broadcaster here in the, well, just sit here in the United States, but that's not where I actually am. I'm in the United Kingdom. So over in the United States, where I obviously grew up. More convinced, uh, surer. I'm getting a bit surer about how I'm faring with this crossword, but I'm still still struggling a little bit in places. Some $200 monopoly proper properties in brief. I think RRs for railroads. I suspect that's true for all the various regional versions of monopoly. Betray, or a hint to four answers in the puzzle. Ah, very good. This is double cross, because we are literally doubling these crosses. This one is a cross, and we're doubling it to two. This four is a cross, and we're, I guess, doubling it to eight whenever I figure this out. Similarly, three to six and two to four. Anyway, very good. Very clever. Bite sight. Bite sight. And sound at the end of December, appropriately. R? Air? Well, not, what is this getting at? Sound at the end of December. Oh, I see. Burr, as in I'm cold because it's winter. It's December. Ah, very clever. Very, very clever. Burr, December. Racial justice movement since 2013 in brief. This would be BLM. Black Lives Matter. And then, oh, I see. Wednesday, but not Friday. Adams. Wednesday Adams from the Adams family, the television program. 
That's what that is. Very good. That's a that's another clever another clever bit of cluing. Set of fifty on the Argo in myth. Presumably this is ores. A match to that skull answer earlier up here. Bite sight. Bite sight. I keep wanting to think this is nape, as in a vampire bites the nape of your neck, but I obviously double cross is correct up there, so that's not the case. So what would this be? Sorry, I'm just glancing at my keyboard, trying to be inspired by the letters. It's, this seems like it should be so unbelievably obvious, so I'm apologizing for your E yelling at the screen here. Well, without going through every single letter in the alphabet, I'm just not seeing it, which is ludicrous. What? Awesomest book. Oh, cafe. Sorry. You have a bite at the cafe. Ugh. Okay. I was almost thinking cake as in you take a bite of cake, but that's not a site. A site is a location. All right. So an awesomest bud is a BFF, best friend forever, and decorate. Oh, bedeck. I was wrong about press hit. I mean, press hit, I think, is a, a legitimate phrase, but that's not what this is. It's a press kit. A press kit is um, a sort of bundle of press releases and artwork and things that you would give a member of the press in order to write a story about your product or whatever it is that you want them to write a story about. And you might, as a result of that, <laughs> get a press hit. But that's not what this answer is. It is press kit. So sorry about that. That um, threw me off the scent a bit here with the decorate. And uh, be deck. That's, uh, we do deck the halls, right? Which is well, there's that Christmas song anywhere, somewhere in the gr grid. Let's keep going. Artificial habitat. Um, biodome, this looks like, maybe. Sort of enclosed environment recreation. Not thinking, uh, I don't know, on auto, maybe. Big believer in the freedom of assembly. And it's a question mark. Boy, you... Question mark could be almost anything here. It could be on big, could be assembly. I don't know, could even be freedom maybe. What is this? Success. Oh, it works. It works. Success, the theme, it works. Word before cap or pop. Ice, presumably. Ice caps. Ice pop. Part of many a corsage. An orchid, presumably, right? A flower in a corsage. Neighborhood of Mozambique. This looks like Malawi. Most chiffon-like. Airiest, right? A chiffon cake, I suppose, has very aerated. Real cut-up. If you're a real cut-up, you're a riot. Prefix with classical. Well, with this cross, it looks like neo... Oops. Ah, what am I doing? Neoclassical, I would think. Fast runners and classic folk story that teaches a lesson of sharing. And big believer in the freedom of assembly. Ah, I see. It's Ikea. Or how is, how is it actually pronounced? Ikea? Ikea? I don't remember. <laughs> it's not pronounced Ikea, but I can remember how it's pronounced. Anyway, it's the, it's the um, prefab furniture store retailer, and they believe in freedom of assembly. You are free to assemble your own, your own furniture. Long runs could be eras. In other words, a long run of years, a long run of history. Landscapers supply. They might have a supply of sod to lay down. Prof's degree could be a PhD. A philosophy doctorate, I suppose. Advanced math degree. Oh, maybe this isn't. So long runs might not be eras. It might be eons. In other words, an indefinite, enormous number of years and then an advanced math degree would be the would be nth the nth degree to the to the power of n not thinking on auto okay that was correct classic folk story that teaches a lesson of sharing oh i see this is stone soup this is the the uh i think the 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 fable in which all of the everyone's there's soup that's made of stones and everyone's invited to sort of bring an extra ingredient and toss it in. It's a stone soup, but you can bring an ingredient and toss it in. And then as a result of everybody bringing all these different ingredients and throwing them all in the stoop, soup, it's a delicious soup. And someone remarks, oh, it's so funny that stone soup would be so delicious, but it was 
It was the power of sharing and cooperation and collaboration that actually made the soup delicious. Anyway, uh, language in which kia ora is a greeting. I suspect this is Maori. Fast runners, ah, hares, as in the tortoise and the hare. So we've got another fable um, right underneath our stone soup folk story. That's nice. Makeup target. Um, a lash, maybe? You could put makeup on your lashes. Where a married at first sight contestant meets his or her, her mate. Never even heard of this. Is this, a, I assume, a television program? Some sort of reality show, maybe? Or the altar, I guess? Wow, good God. So <laughs> I guess this is a this is a series on which people are married blind or something? I'm not I don't really understand. You have to marry someone on anyway, whatever. Okay, like Allah. Yes, yeah, so in the style of Allah. Hedy of the 2017 documentary Bombshell. Oh, Hedy Lamar. Oh. I did not know there's a 2017 documentary about Hedy Lamar, but she's come up on the crossword a couple times. And as I've said, then an actress and an inventor and scientist, a very, very fascinating person. Spain's Duchess of Alba. That's what that is. Arizona, Arizona County or its seat. Um, I think I pretty much just know this from the film 310 to Yuma or the films, I guess, for 310 to Yuma, but I think it's Yuma. Monthly publication of the National Puzzlers League with the... Ah, I, I don't know this. I wonder if it's referring to crosswords. Time-consuming assignment to grade. Well, it is time-consuming to grade an essay relative to grading a multiple-choice test or something like that. Xanax alternative. So this would be a drug, maybe an anti-anxiety drug? I'm not... don't remember which one Xanax is. Quite ever so... This theme is ever so clever, isn't it? Word in many font name. This would be sans, as in uh, sans serif, when letters, block letters, which I think came up yesterday, um, don't have the little sort of feet that extend. Actually, you can see them here in Think Twice. The little feet that, that are on um, the ends of the strokes of these glyphs are called serifs and when you see a, a font called Sans, as in Comic Sans is probably the most famous one, that means it doesn't have these serifs. That's what that means. Anyway, thin incision is a slit. An insurance giant bailed out in 2008. This was AIG was bailed out. And here we have The Enigma, the monthly publication of the National Puzzles League, and Valium, Xanax alternative. Well, that sounds correct. Okay, so accelerator particles are ions, right? An ion accelerator. To overwhelm is to to flood, I would think. Oh, whoops. Oops, got these wrong. Sorry, this is why I had so much trouble with alerts and I kept glossing over it because what I had led to potifies, which is nothing. That means nothing. It is notifies. And this is not drink up, it is drink in. And that makes, that's better. To drink in the beauty of a scene is certainly a more common usage than to drink up the beauty of a scene. Drink up is a bit more, mm, a bit greedier maybe of a, of a connotation. And then that makes actress Meryl Dinah, either Dinah Meryl or Meryl Dinah, I don't know. Um, but the crosses say it is Dinah or Dina. So, so it is. Uh, this looks like sneeze, right? Sternutation. A sternutation must be a sneeze. I'll have to look that up. That's a new one on me. As you like it, forest, suds. Yeah, so I think this is Arden, and suds would be beer, and the beleaguered are behind, oh, I see, behind the four ball or behind the eight ball. So that's that's referencing billiards uh, balls, the eight, behind the eight ball. Yep, that does sound correct. And then here we have a bad temper, ah, spleen, yeah. Um, I don't know why a bad temper is referred to as a spleen, the... Uh, organ in your body, but it is, I think. So, well, I don't think it is. It just is. So that's the answer to this clue. All right. So now we do have to close out this troublesome little patch up at, up in the top. So places for development. It does look like uteri, doesn't it? Starman. Sorry if you're seeing these. List of performers. Nail polish brand. I just, I'm just not going to know that. First law enforcement organization to hire a female officer. 
Samoan capital. Oh boy, is this? Um, boy, it is on the absolute tip of my tongue. Uh, I want to say it starts with A and maybe ends with A as well. This is killing me here. Uh, what else do we have? Well, if it started with A, this could be LAPD, right? So that could be correct. I'm, 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 I'm fairly confident that Samoan capital starts and ends in A. And I, and I think, sorry, I know this is ridiculous, but I'm sort of slowly whittling it down. I think it is, I think it, I'm pretty sure the, it has these letters in it. I, I'm, if I had to guess, I would say it's Appia. Let's see if that works. Oh, 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 yes, it does. Because Lister Performers is a lineup, of course. And this would be, I'm going to guess this is LAPD, the Los Angeles Police Department. And then Sarcastic Internet Laughter. Lols or lulls? Is this Sagan? Carl Sagan? What am I missing here? Maybe this is U UN? Do I have something else? Sorry. I'm sorry if this is all completely self-evident. I really apologize. I feel, I feel a little silly right now. So this, I think, would be an O or a U. Nail polish brand. I'm not going to know what that is. Oh, boy. So I can't... I can't uh, confirm or deny this guess. And then I'm, at the end, this would be a Z or an S. Oh, boy. Could it be Zagat, the restaurant rating book? There must be some other Zagat that I'm not catching. Starman. What is this? I'm sorry. I'm just going to put in what I think these are, and we'll have to see if the puzzle, if the puzzle works. Oh boy, is this going to be O or U? If it's sarcastic, internet laughter. I think U might be a little bit too ahead of the curve for the New York Times. So I'm going to put in an O for lols. In other words, a sort of sarcastic version of LOL. Oh boy. All right. Oof. That was a rocky one there. I came down to the wire. Um, that was a that was a really tough <laughs> last few clues for me. Um, so OPI didn't know. I was lucky that I got there with Simone Capital. I, that was a funny one. I had to sort of um, scrape at that in my brain. All right. So this was a fun puzzle with this theme. I really like this theme. Very well done, Amy Lucido and Ella Dershowitz. Um, we've got these doubled numbers here, these double crosses, if you will. And I definitely will, because that's very clever. And there were some good cluing throughout the puzzle, uh, good stuff in general. And it's, it's been a long one. We're already coming up on 50 minutes, so I probably shouldn't keep you here much longer. But, uh, but I enjoyed this puzzle and it gave me some trouble. It gave me some trouble throughout, but it really gave me some trouble at the end. And I have to say, this was one where I did have to basically get a little bit lucky. I really still don't know. The only one I really don't understand is Starman Zagat. Zagat is the name of a husband and wife team who founded the Zagat restaurant rating booklet, I suppose, that aggregated uh, restaurant reviews from, I guess, I think from ordinary people, basically. And if you remember, they used to have them, they used to have Zagat excerpts on restaurant doors and windows. And they were always really bizarre and hilarious to read because they would be, you'd have a single sentence composed of, you know, eight different little fragments. And it would say things like, and each one would be quoted. Each one would be a, a, a little brief excerpt of someone else's review. And it would say things like, this charming restaurant features dark paneled wood and things like this. 
And it would always read incredibly sarcastically because it would look like they're putting scare quotes around every other word. So I always found Zagat reviews very funny for that reason. And um, they were acquired by Google maybe 10 years ago or something. And I think have basically withered away since then. But I don't know if that's the star man this is referring to. It's probably not. Anyway, sorry, I'll stop talking your ear off about Zagat. <laughs> but, um, but I enjoyed this puzzle. It gave me some trouble, but I really, really liked the theme. I thought it was very clever. And there was some really good, clever cluing throughout the puzzle as well. So all in all, a good puzzle. Um, trickier for me than I think a Sunday usually is. I'd be interested to know how you fared. So let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the series. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video, but I hope you're enjoying the series more broadly. And if you think you would, then why not subscribe to it so that you see these videos as they go up each morning. It's easy to subscribe. Just press the button wherever it is. I think it's in a different place on every platform, so I won't try and point like I've seen some people do in videos because it's almost always incorrect for whatever platform you're looking at this on. If you think you know someone who might enjoy this series as well, why not pass it on to them? Because they might. They might enjoy watching someone guess about who Zagat the Starman might be. And if you particularly appreciate uh, watching flummoxed guesses as to the identity of Zagat the Starman, why not toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks to help make this series sustainable going forward? You can do that by making a small donation of your choice on either a one-off or recurring monthly basis through my coffee page, which is linked in the description underneath each video. And thank you so much to everybody has, who has already done so. With that, I will leave you to have an excellent rest of your Sunday. I hope you join me tomorrow for what will certainly be a much speedier and much gentler solve for the Monday puzzle, the first puzzle of the work week and the simplest of the week. So with that, Take care. Hello, I'm back quickly because the instant I pressed stop on the video recording, I realized what Starman Zagat is getting at. It is indeed Zagat, the restaurant ratings booklet or former whatever, and it's referring to star ratings. I don't remember what the Zagat rating scale was. Maybe it was out of five stars or four stars, but I think that must be what it's getting at. A star man, the man who rates the restaurants. I think that's maybe not the most accurate thing because it was a husband and wife duo. They were the Zagats. You know, there were two of them. Um, and it's especially odd because Zagat was a uh, almost a sort of early version of crowdsourcing reviews, basically, um, pre-internet originally. Um, but, oh, fair enough, clever. I, I, it was, oops, it is a clever clue, even though you could maybe quibble with the accuracy of it. And it being so similar to Carl Sagan, who could also be clued, who could honestly more accurately be clued Starman, uh, that really was caused me to think twice again and again and again. Anyway, Zagat, Starman, star ratings of restaurants. That's what that is. Okay, I'm off for real this time. Take care. Mm -hmm.